your purpose. Your purpose is like gas in your fuel tank. It, it will drive you. It will move you. It will carry you over that crazy stuff. And when you have put in a hundred hours of work and you get you look at the money that came in and you're like, this isn't the minimum wage. If I had worked this many hours at McDonald's, I would have more money. And I'm going to say you're 100% correct, but you would lose. If you work that many hours for McDonald's, the thing you don't get is the lesson that you learned working 100 hours for yourself. Because, see, this is the deal. I want you to think about this in terms of compound interest. You're working for yourself. You're putting all these hours in, but the money just does not look right compared to the level of effort. Peeps, I tell you, life is a trip. Notice something that's happened. You know, in this football season, and I'm a crazy football fan. It, it's kind of crazy. You would think that people who experience instant success, it would be great. But it's not working out like that. And it started long before that madness of last night with the San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. When that game started, uh, in my mind, I was like, they look better with Tim Tebow. Seriously, more intent on purpose, but it's a new offense. It's going to take a little time to work the wrinkles out. But I did not expect a team that's 24, now 24, nothing to come back. But, but 17 of those 24 points were from mistakes on the behalf of the Denver Broncos. Something to think about. When the majority of your points came off turnovers and you're not adding other points, and they just couldn't move the ball. And also with college teams, I mean, just uh, on my other channel, I put it up. ESPN, 30 for 30, broke. It, it's just crazy the amount of money these guys lost. And they're having a serious battle in the comment section because people are going off and they're just like, hey, you know, if you were 21 and someone offers you a lot of money, what would you do? And I mean, it's a valid point because I know at 21, I was a knucklehead, but I would have put a little money away. I wouldn't be broke after earning that type of money. Sorry, it wouldn't be me. But that's not the total, that's not where I'm going with this video. Because one of the things about online marketing, people making money online is speed, 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 speed. Make it fast, make it fast, make it, make it choppy, make it snappy, son. And I've seen some people who've experienced instant success, did really well, really quickly, and they like fizzled out. Then I've seen people, because I know a guy who started a website, 14 years ago. The last four years have really been where he's made the money. But he started it a long time ago. Now, he's made a lot of money in the last four years. Don't feel smarter for him. You know, he's made a lot of money. But the thing is, I think for the average person in the way that we're geared in our society, because you, you hear this saying, the more money you make, the more money you're going to spend. As if it's some de facto law of life. And it's not. It's a choice. Because most of us do not have a solid financial education. It's just not there. Not a solid financial education. And that's the big, big part because it's not taught in schools. And if mom and dad don't have that financial education, they can't impart it to you. I had to learn my own financial education. And fortunately, growing up poor, having mentors, it helped me out a lot because I would have never thought that I would say this growing up with nothing at times prepared me to handle success. For some people, it's a recipe of disaster. But for me, it was just like, I know what it's like to not have anything, nothing, just be totally ass out. And, you know, when I got a few nickels together, I started to hold on to them. But the deal is. Instant success with the wrong mindset is a recipe for disaster. Simply put, 
many people who get some money coming in really, really quickly, they don't have a frame of reference to learn how to handle that. Give me an example. Most lotteries, don't quote me on this, have an option where you can take a lump sum or a hybrid model, which most financial planners recommend is you take half of the lump sum, then you take the annuity on the other half. That way, if you totally ass up the first half you take as a lump sum, you're still going to have money coming in every month, year, however they pay. And I know someone that won a lottery and they get, you know, they get a lump sum every year in their 14 feet. Oh, no, still have got 14 more years on that deal, 14 or 16. But they get a lump sum minus taxes, same time every year, which is enough for the average person to live on very well in a year. And the deal is people are not comfortable with success and money. You see it all of the time. You get the money, didn't have a drug problem before, but now all of a sudden, <laughs> come on, man, give it to, I mean, it just happens because when you're a regular person and you don't have someone to guide you through that maze, success is an intense bitch. I've been studying this for a while, you know, with like, you know, just, give, you know, just go back to Monday Night Football, Chargers, they were cruising, they came out in the second half, they were flat, and Peyton started doing that thing, and it started, I'm just like, when they scored their second touchdown off the pick six, I was like, these fuckers are going to win. No, you can't tell me. And they did. And they won convincingly after getting. It was a tale of two halves. But the whole deal is, I think, and shoot, even with my love, my favorite football team, University of Alabama, Roll Tide, kicking Mizzou's ass for the first quarter and half quarter, then 38-minute rain delay and it was like another team came out the locker room and they finally woke up and like, oh, yeah, yeah, we better beat these guys. Because <laughs> it was just like, they were like, eh, you know, we, we were owning these guys. And then kickoff return, special teams collapse. I was just sitting there like, and, you know, Coach Saban, he said it. It's just, it's hard to convince these guys that they're going to come back. And, you know, it's just. That rain delay, whoo, let's hope that not, doesn't happen in the big game. And Lou Holtz said it on Game Center, on ESPN. Every week, a different team comes out there. And, you know, people kind of like, ah. And, I've, and you see it. You see it in the NFL. You see it in basketball teams. It's like, take a scrub team that been getting their ass kicked, but they're playing the juggernaut, and for some reason they stand up on their hind legs and Arr! we're going to do it, and sometimes they win. Mental. Mental. That's what the hustler mindset's about, changing your mentality. Because if you have the wrong mentality, the best things in the world can drop in your lap. You can make a lot of money. You can be very successful. And in the end, you lose it all because mentally you are not prepared to handle it. There's a whole subset of woes and issues mentally that creates that paradigm. And I, I watched it because I look at myself and, you know, like you've never heard me complain about YouTube. The other day I had some uh, unhappy people flag a video and it came down. First time in, since I've been on YouTube. And I was just like... Why? Because 99.8% of my experience on YouTube has been positive. It's been wonderful. It's been great. And I've noticed that other people, that when something like that happens, they do a barrage of a video and they try to like do have petitions signed and it's just like, it's terrible. It's free. Like Louis K said, everything is wonderful and everyone's unhappy. Because expectations and mental minds, you know, mental paradigms do not align with reality oftentimes. This is my position on YouTube. I can't really be mad at YouTube for shit. 
there, there makes no sense. It makes no sense. I'm just like, and move on because the benefit is outstanding. And that's what I'm talking about because there are people who become successful and they start to feel entitled to that success regardless of the fact if they're working for it or not. That's the problem because I don't feel entitled to anything. I don't feel entitled to the next book sale. I don't feel entitled to the next video view. I don't feel entitled for the next uh, positive review. I don't feel entitled to any of that stuff because all I have to do is close my eyes and just remember sitting on that bed in that little crappy ass room in that boarding house with a crackhead running down the street shooting the gun. And it's like, if I don't do what I need to do, I can end up right back there. It could happen. It could happen. And it can happen very easily because it's very easy to be seduced by success. It's exceptionally easy to be seduced by success. Because success starts like, oh, you're, you're the best thing since sliced bread. And you are wonderful and you're outstanding. And if you get some psychophants, you know, like a lot of these athletes and celebrities, they have this crew, it's like, oh, yeah, you're the best thing. And the thing is, they stop doing, and you see this in basketball games, football games, teams that had a great philosophy, working, getting, moving the ball up court, moving the ball downfield, and for some reason, they get a nice lead, and they stop doing what they were doing to be successful. That The sports field is not the only place that happens. I've seen that happen with my friends. I've seen that happen with other businesses. And I'm just like, I don't want that to happen to me. So the thing is, you have to stay grounded. You, you really, really have to stay grounded and be thankful for the little things, the big things, the good things, the nasty things, the bugs. Like, I'm telling you, this little secret, I don't really kill bugs. You know, a lot of times I've thumped the bug outside because I'm like, because the thing is, as long as you ain't really, you know, now, hey, that does not extend to roaches. Roaches, Ray! but seriously, it's, you got to be thankful. You got to be thankful and you have to have some perspective on what is what. You, you really, don't, like Jason Tuck, he's a, he's a native son of Alabama and I was watching his special about him and his father. And, you know, he has, you know, uh, injury. He wasn't making a lot of money. And, you know, it's like, you go out there, this bad thing can happen. His father's like, you grew up working hard for nothing. You made more money in a few months than I made in my whole life. Jason, like, you're right, Dad. Went out there, just threw his body, threw caution to the wind was rewarded with like a damn near $40 million contract after that season. So, understand, you know, success is composed of many, many different things. But we in America have this limited and myopic view of success that creates a lot of problems when it stacks up. And a lot of people just aren't grounded because, like I said, in any time, any day, all this stuff could go away if I stop doing the things that made me successful, which is research, trying something new, keep doing different things. Um, that's what you're going to have to do. But understand, there's a lot, a lot of dangers to instant success if, you know, especially on something that I talked about a long time ago with money. If you don't manage your money, your money's going to manage you. There is no in-between kind of, sort of. Only people who are immune to this are folks who have parents who have vast sums of money and I don't care what they do, they can't spend it all. You know, if you got that type of situation, it doesn't matter. For the other 99.99.98% of us, it does matter. It, it, it does. And the thing is, you can't crave instant success without balancing yourself out as you climb. Because I think there's a reason that people who took a minute to get to where they are typically have their money. Because you look at some of uh, some players that, you know, their names are household names. I'll give you a Bill Lundbeer. That fool was making a ton of money from his businesses and saving money. And he was, but you know, that was a different era. But the whole point is, 
there's nothing wrong with working hard and there's nothing wrong with experience and instant success. But you need to gear your mentality to the point that you can handle it. And then, you know, if you know that you have a problem with money and you come into a bunch of money, because the thing is, I used to wonder why, you know, like a lot of when there's like, got my account, got my attorney and all. I'm just like, why the hell do you need all these people? I was totally ignorant of what happens that once someone wins the lottery. Folks from every corner of the earth crawling up from the depths of hate. I mean, people just start coming out of the woodwork and they have to have some no men or it will disappear on them. Lone loft relatives, people talking about, hey, I'm your son. I mean, seriously, some of the stuff that I found when I researched, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I didn't know because I was just like, because me, I don't play the lottery, so I'm not going to win. But if I did play the lottery and if I did win, my ass would be there the next morning. But once again, I have a different financial education than most other people. Because I can tell you right now, if I won the lottery, the first thing I would do, I would find some solid, solid, low interest yielding investments. Yep. I, I would just invest the whole damn thing. Lump sum, invest the whole damn thing. And because and live off the interest. Like say I got 10 million. Find something that yields three. And I'm talking about three, four percent. I'm not talking about ten percent. Three, four consistently it's out there. It's three hundred and something grand a year. I can live off of that. <laughs> I can live off of that. And I would keep working. But that's me. But the deal is with success, you have to have balance mentally. Because you look at the people like Jerry Rice, who had a great work ethic. And this is something, and this right here is my pet peeve. Randy Moss, if he was mentally together, his career would have been longer and his records would have been bigger than Jerry Rice because he had more talent than Jerry Rice, but he did not have Jerry Rice will, determination, and work ethic. He didn't have that. So he's just, I mean, seriously, wasted talent. What this guy could have did is immense, but, you know, he was just stuck up on some stupid shit. Straight up. I've seen the, the interviews and I'm just like, Randy, why? Why? And then people are like, oh, that man can be his own man. He can say what... <sighs> when you start thinking of a legacy, when you start really thinking uh, at the end of your career, end of your life, being up on a podium, talking smack, Talking some stupid, dumb shit is going to sound real, real stupid, even to you. Because you're like, oh, that wasn't so good. That wasn't so bright. I've worked in a hospital. I, I'm not, I've never seen a deathbed confession. But I have seen people that knew it was coming. And just the things that they spoke about was totally different than other things that you would think. And it's not big stuff. It's about people. And it's about legacy. And it's about kids. That's what it's about. It's not about the money and all this other stuff. So I'm telling you, guarantee you, Randy Moss, when he gets to the end of that train and he looks back, he's not going to be happy with himself, nor should he be. But that's the deal. Instant success with a limited perspective is usually going to be disaster. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next video. Essentially, there's some confusion about my consulting services and I thought I would make a short video to give you an idea of what's going on. Business consulting, business coaching, what I can do for you and you and you and you. Because many people are coming in and they have some expectations that I messed up and put those expectations in your head. So I'm going to reach in your head and rattle it around and pull them out and just throw them away like they're gone. Number one. Not doing any eBay consulting. I don't know. People keep saying, hey, you know, e I hate fucking eBay, okay? I fucking hate eBay. I, eBay. Why would I consult? Why would I even? No, it makes no sense. Amazon consulting. No, I don't do Amazon consulting. There's tons of people who do eBay coaching, Amazon coaching. I'm not one of them. I'm the guy that believes in having your own website. I'm the guy that believes in creating and using internet assets to build your stuff. Not using someone else's because I think 
even in the beginning, they're very good and they make you money. But at some point, they bite you in the ass. So at some point, if you're going to do this thing, you must have your own internet properties. At some point, you have to have it. So why not do that first? And if you still feel the urge, that little scratch to go do the third party platform, do it. But work on your own stuff. So just get that clear. I don't fuck with eBay. I don't mess around with Amazon. And what do I do? I am a strategist. I am a growth person. I do business development. Strategy, why are we doing what we're doing? And create a roadmap to get you from point A to point B. Because many people are so in their business that they can't see their business. It's like, I can't see the inside of this shirt because I got it on. It's kind of like where many of you are with your business. You're so invested in it and you're so close to it, you can't see it because you're in it. So with me, I'm like, hmm, okay, that's going on, that's going on. Hold on, let me... Oh, yeah, you got that going on in there, too. So that's where the strategy comes from because many small business owners have me syndrome. I can figure it out. I'm the smartest person. No, you can't figure it out. If I didn't come across Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field, Tony Robbins, Tommy Hopkins, Brian Tr there were so many mentors that I picked up along the way because I couldn't figure it out. And there were many of you like, I'm going to figure it out. And what you're going to run into is an information ceiling. The information that you have is only going to get you here. And that's it. You're not going any further. You're not building any further. Because it's just you. I want you to think about something. And I've said this and no one has mentioned it in the comments since I've been doing YouTube. I started in the storage auction business with a partner from day one. It was never just me. There's always been additional elements to my business success. I had a partner. I had a very good partner who was an accountant. Okay, let's talk about that. So the business was properly structured, accounting, account set up, banking, from day one. That's one of the reasons that I was able to beat the Clampets and these other people. Because we had proper business protocols from day one. It makes a huge difference. Which means if you're just thinking you can do it by yourself, and there's some of you who are brilliant and you'll get it done by yourself, but the truth of the matter is most of you will not. That's reality. I'm not hating, just stating. So growth. You got a business that's going on, but there's this disconnect between the internet and certain people. Because I've said this before, you'll see someone, they're doing really great out there in the real world, but they can't really get it on the internet because the internet is a separate business, as I talked about in another video. Actually, that video's in Hustle University. Sorry about that. It's a different animal. It's different. It's like different section of the matrix with its own rules and regulations. So seriously, if you have a physical business and you have an internet business, you have two businesses. You don't have one. You have two. And if you treat them as two distinct businesses, you're going to get more traction. So business development. What are we going to do? What can we do? There's many times you want to start a business. And once you start getting feedback from the world, it will lead you to start another business or another service or another product. Many people get scared and they'll be like, I'm going to do what I want to do because it's a dream. Versus Taking the feedback, they ignore it, and they crash, and they just go boom. So I'm the guy that's like your guide, your shogun. I just show you the way. I can help you build up so many things. Now, this is something you really need to do before you contact me because many people, and that's what I'm doing this video, ask yourself, what kind of life do you want? Now, this is going to sound offensive, but if you are more concerned with creating some business processes to get some money and forget the whole lifestyle planning, I don't want to work with you. And this is why. Because you'll build up that business, and because you neglected the lifestyle planning, you're going to end up in the same place you were today emotionally. Even Your business might be humming along, you might be making money, and just to put a dark moment on that, Sometimes when people are fantastically wealthy from a fiscal standpoint, but their soul has poverty, their spirit is bankrupt, sometimes these people kill themselves with millions of dollars in the bank. Just to let you know, that shit doesn't mean anything when your total life isn't together. So if you don't want to 
work on the lifestyle planning because that's something I require. Like, what kind of life do you want? How do you want to live? What kind of hours you work? And people are like, well, I don't want that. I just want, you know, give me the stuff to make some money and then get shut the fuck up and get on. I don't want to work with you. If that's your thing, there's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of business consultants. Go find one because I'm going to put you through that process. And it's a good process because I put myself through the process. And that's the reason I have to deal with traffic. That's the reason I get to work at home. That's the reason in the middle of the day I go work out in the gym because I don't have to deal with certain things because it was all part of a plan, a lifestyle plan. I don't want to drive. I don't want to commute. So I created a business to serve those needs. Now, why is that important? Brings your stress level from it. I get in traffic. I don't get road rage. Because I'm not exposed to that. I'm not exposed to that all the time. So that's very, very important. Less stress, less wear and tear on your spirit and body. You can't replace this. It renews itself, but the less stress you put on it, and it's good, there's good stress and there's bad stress, but the less bad stress you put on it, the longer, the healthier you are. To me, that's incredibly important. Maybe not to you, but to me, it's incredibly important. So, lifestyle planning. So, another part of this is, where do you want to go? What kind of business? I mean, what do you, where do you want to go? What are you doing? Do you want to save whale? I mean, what? What is your thing? What do you want to do? Because there are many people who's just like what I call a get money hustler. I just want to make some money because I have an immediate financial need, and I need to solve that problem. Now, I don't, follow, I don't want to work with you. Number one, you're broke. Number, just straight up, you're broke. You don't have any money to pay me, and you will work the shit out of me with no money. I did it a few times just to be charitable, and it was one of the worst experiences because when you are not only fiscally broke, your spirit may be broke. Money comes and goes, but it's hard to fix a broken spirit. It may never be fixed. I don't have those kind of powers, so you need to come to me with some kind of intact stuff, some things that you're working on. So, I can't do that. I just can't do that. It is just crazy. Now, how much money do you want to make? I ask people this all the time, and I, I get the who the who, who the, the, the outlook is it's well, well the first, the standard answer is as much as possible. That's a bullshit answer. It's very hard to quantify as much as possible. I get you nowhere. You know, today, $30 will be as much as possible. And then your mind's like, okay, that's as much as possible. And then that's where you are. You need to have a number. You got to have a number. The number helps you tremendously. It forces you to focus. It forces you to look at things from a critical standpoint. Just, I want to make as much money as possible. Oh, I just hope to be happy. Oh, I hope to eat. Oh, I hope to have gas in my car. I'll just... You go nowhere with that. Nowhere. So know where you're going. Have a number. And we'll just start from there. And also, let's talk about the process. It takes me time to figure out who you are, where you want to be. And that's part of the process because a lot of people email me and they want to talk. And I'll see the email and I can just tell from that first email that this is a 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 20 hour deal. If your life is fucked up and it's been fucked up for a while, it's not going to become unfucked in an hour. It's not happening. So you got to invest in yourself. If you don't want to invest in yourself, that's fine. But don't expect me to invest in you when you don't want to invest in you. And that's what a lot of people do. It's like, hey, let's go to lunch. Hey, let No. <laughs> we need to do something. We need to make some stuff happen. And uh, one of the beauties of having a lifestyle plan, I'm very blunt. I use profanity. I've been called unfucking professional. And I am unfucking professional. I have no desire to be fucking professional. I have a great desire to be me. And this is me. This is what you get. You meet me in the street. This is how I'm going to be. You, when business deals, I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to help you make more money. I'm going to help you have a better life. There is benefit because I'm not going to <sighs> blow smoke up your ass. Because if you're paying me, I'm going to tell you about yourself and we're going to do the things to make your business good. Which is another part. You need to have a business. You, you need to have a business. If you don't have a business, we are into business development planning, which takes hours. 
I cannot talk to you for 10 hours and get just a, a lunch. It's emotionally depleting because I want you to be successful. I'm rooting for you. I'm like, I got pom-poms. I'm cheering for you. And that's a long commitment. So with that, how do I get paid? Per hour, per project, if you have a project. And this is, once again, where you need to tell me what you're trying to do. Because there are many people like, hey, you know, I want to do this, 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 this. And they'll give me what I call topical stuff. And only after the money's paid and the clock is really ticking, that they start telling me the truth. They'll tell me what they think. It's like, well, hey, you know, this is... I have had people that I didn't really find out the secret thing from them until the third conversation because it's like this. It's like I put on my hat and I'm in the mind and I'm looking for stuff. Okay, okay. Oh, you you know, you do this? Well, let's do this and this and this. I have to find this stuff out to help you. And many people are not used to being freaking honest with themselves. It's just like, well, I want honest with that. Everything else is just who the who. So that's part of the process. So you gotta you gotta know. So get paid per hour per project. And if you have a real business with real books and numbers, that means you have a your accounts already set up. Or if I have to do it, I'll do an equity split. So say I imp improve your business X amount, then I get X amount with a monthly retainer. Because there are many people who's like, hey, let's do the equity thing. Then I'll work for a whole month. And this happened. I actually did this for someone. Worked for a whole month. And they didn't want to pay me. And it wasn't because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I did it too well. Because when her husband saw how much more money. He had a problem. He's like, well, was it really worth that? I mean, you know, we'll just throw you maybe. You know, this is what the guy said to me. He said, 800 bucks. It was a $20,000 differential. And he's like, well, yeah, that's worth about 800 bucks. And I just pulled up my contract and said, well, if I go to court, I'm going to get all 20. And then I got paid what they were supposed to pay me. So that whole thing is, and that's when, and once again, in my business, I have learned that I must set expectations. So if we do something equity, it's going to be a contract. You need to get an attorney. You need to look at this stuff. And it'll be a simple contract. But that's the deal. If you want to do equity, there will be some money up front, plus there'll be a monthly retainer, plus the equity per month i go per month because when i was doing per quarter that got a little dicey so those are the three modes of how i get paid now let's talk about life coaching i get this all of the time if you're on my email address e-list you see this you know i'll send out something and there's people who want life coaching and they want to be guinea pigs and all this other stuff but they don't want to pay for it i don't have to give away stuff for free anymore 2009 yes 2010 a little bit I don't have to do that anymore. And I'm not. <laughs> so if you want those services, fine. So, all right, as I always do, because if you stay here this long, you're really interested and you're not fucking a pussy. You know, fucking doesn't really bother you. Actually, you're probably going to be fucking tonight because you're a winner. So this is the deal.